Would you like a lion in your living room? You won't be breaking any laws if you do. Not even the upcoming private members bill by MP Henry Smith in Westminster to ban the import of hunting trophies. These lions are flawless, realistic fakes. They can be designed to be just like the lion you shot. They can be cheaper than a full mount of your lion and they will never suffer from moths. Rishi Sunak's government is backing Henry Smith's anti-hunting bill, even though these replica trophies mean it will be obsolete before it hits the statute book. We can uh, take a, a photos of a hunted lion or, or rhino or polar bear for that matter and actually recreate uh, a, a trophy that looks just like their hunted animal. We can match anything down from scars on the face to coloration of the mane or whatever uh, to make it look just like their, their hunted trophy. Henry Smith's bill is on its way to becoming a bad law before it's passed. Even then, it may not survive, as a recent short-lived U.S. ban shows. President Obama banned the import of ivory in 2015. In 2017, President Donald Trump tweeted that big game trophy hunting was a horror show. But he realised his mistake and quietly lifted the ban on importing elephant trophies in 2018. Here's his son, Donald Trump Jr., a keen hunting tourist and possible presidential hopeful at the 2023 SCI convention in Nashville, Tennessee, where we interviewed Darrell, and a man whose company helps hunters ship trophies home from all over the world. It didn't stop them from going to Africa. Um, it did stop them from, from hunting elephants. Um, but at the end of the day, they were still going over. There's lots of species that are, are still viable species. Um, and the elephant population, as far as we know, is, is higher today than it has been in hundreds of years because of sustainable hunting and, and practices with CITES. And, and it's not a free-for-all. Um, That's another reason that Henry Smith's law won't work. Another is the mischaracterization of hunting tourists. It's hard to find an earnest Hemingway among them these days. Carol Grit is a retired civil servant from Hampshire. She's just returned from South Africa, where she donated the meat from her hunt to a nearby orphanage. We've got a huge impala. Impalas are not particularly big deer, but they have still got a lot of meat on them. But we've got quite a big one. and um, We took it to an orphanage. And it's one of these orphanages where the children are born of mothers who are alcohol dependent. So the children, when they're born, they're not particularly well either. And nobody wants them. So we've actually took it, and they've had about 40 children there. So we took the Impala there, and they're absolutely over the moon because it's all free. Even though his business relies on the export, not the import of trophies, and the UK government doesn't want to ban trophy export, professional deer stalker Neil Raumentree opposes a trophy import ban because it damages conservation. Fortunately, I was in Dallas at the start of the year with Dallas Safari Club, and uh, the ambassador for Tanzania addressed the, the Conservation Committee of Dallas. And I know to a lot of people that don't support hunting, they talking about conservation, and they're going, you're at the Dallas Safari Club, what's the connection? And she made it a really, really telling statement. She said, you know, that Tanzania has one of the biggest biodiversity, you know, they're one of the wealthiest countries in biodiversity terms in the world. They've won the single largest mammal migration occurs in Tanzania. And they said, you know, without a credible alternative, why are well-meaning people trying to remove something that funds conservation? trying to make the connection which exists but we don't want to really investigate it too deeply between hunting and conservation. So I don't know of anywhere that I've been to where hunting is an activity that's got economic value, where conservation doesn't also go hand in hand in, with this. And this is particularly true in Africa where the conservation of wildlife is very, very closely linked with trophy hunting or hunting, commercial hunting. And we need to get away from this idea that it's all about the trophy. It isn't, it's about the experience. And many of the animals that are culled are actually ripe for culling. 
Neil and Cathy Main say a more sensible approach to regulation of trophies is to persuade hunters not to hunt animals before the animals reach their prime. The smart thing to do would be for the sector to start to change how it values trophies. So a trophy of an animal in its prime with a most magnificent spread would actually be something you wouldn't want to put on your wall because it says the wrong thing. That you, you really want a trophy of an animal that is ripe for culling. So either an animal that is unwell, uh, ill, deformed or very old. I think there's scope for change and I, and I think the, the hunting community can no longer take it as read that we have rights to do things. We, we all, as a species, have to start using this planet more sustainably. And if people are looking for more transparency in hunting, then why not? I, I personally would like to see a move in, in the trophy market. And I, and I don't really like the word trophy because trophy means so many different things to different people. But where people harvest game animals, then there should be sound ethics. There should be an environmental reason for it. And animals in their prime shouldn't be taken unless there's a legitimate cause. Could it be habitat? Could it be welfare? But if not, if it's a stag or a bull elephant in his prime, have a good reason before you kill him. And, and that, I think, if we get that message across to the public, we can be seen as what we should be seen as, a safe pair of hands. For Carol, nothing can replace the experience of hunting. She wants to do everything she can to protect the communities she supports when she makes her trips to Africa. Going over there to, yes, you're doing a sport and yes, you're killing an animal, but you know we we do it humanely. And if you if you wounded one, that the, the professional guide that's with you will not let the animal go off on their own. They'll make sure they get to it to dispatch it. And you know, and the schools will all lose out. And the businesses, the land, everything, it just goes down. If other countries follow in suit of this, it'll affect the entire ecosystem and hunting around the world because you have to have value to animals. And if you don't have a value and you have hundreds of thousands of acres that you work and you farm wild game, well, then what are you going to do with it? And we talk about it. There's a study that says that within five years, if you were to ban trophy hunting, the only place you'd see wild game is national parks, which then you would see less of every species um, and you'd go back to the days where there was no regulation and no conservation and d species would be decimated. Those are the wider arguments against Henry Smith's bill. Daryl's company is one of many options hunters can choose. For a lion pedestal, we're at $10,800 for a lion. There are cheaper options out there, are there? I mean, not, your, not from your company necessarily, but I mean, this, this whole um, technology of producing trophies, you know, shooting your trophy in one place and kind of 3D printing it back at home, that's taking place, isn't it? Yeah, there are, there are other like uh, options out there. Like there are, like you had mentioned, the three D printing thing. So there are companies that are doing that type of thing, where they're doing a three D rendering and and three D printing of like horns or, or antlers or something like that. Uh, what we're offering is more of a uh, one off, uh, hand built from scratch type of thing because it's uh, just the the type of process that we're using and and the result that we're creating is a little bit more of a, a one off hand hand built type of product. The problem here is that politicians with an agenda are choosing to ignore technology.